The year is 2012. To the shock of 10 year olds and dumb adults everywhere, the world does not end. Obama comes out in support of gay marriage, making him the first president to do so. The Curiosity rover successfully lands on Mars. Despite this good news, something very dark and nefarious occurred that year, leading to an army of angry memes, a lawsuit, and worst and most embarrassing of all, 12 year old me crying. Mass Effect 3's ending was hated upon release, and this subject has been discussed a lot. But since the Legendary Edition of the series just came out, another mainline game is confirmed, I've decided it's time for me to resurrect this dead horse and dissect it, tearing it apart and finally explaining just why this ending is so bad. Part 1 choices and consequences. If you ask someone what they think makes a Mass Effect game, after making a well bang okay joke and bringing up Garrus, they'll probably say the dialogue and choices. The idea that the choices you make will affect not only yourself but the world around you is what the Mass Effect series was marketed on. And for the most part, the games delivered on this promise. The most obvious example is the suicide mission, but throughout the series we get to see this in action. From companions dying, to getting emails from people you've helped or hurt, the Mass Effect series does an excellent job of making you feel like you're changing the world around you. The ending of Mass Effect 3 completely goes against this idea of choices mattering. Now I'm not going to dwell on this too much because this was the main complaint when the game got released, the way your choices throughout the series don't affect the end ending is a fucking atrocious. The endings you are able to choose is based on a number that goes up when you play multiplayer instead of being a result of your choices. And don't give me that bullshit about the extended cut DLC. It just adds some more cutscenes of stuff being knocked over and adds a very undetailed slideshow, the narration of which doesn't talk about any of your choices outside the ending you picked and has no specific details about the fate of your companions or the consequences of your non-ending act. Actions. Part 2. The Crucible makes no sense. The Crucible as a plot device is okay. The idea of a Hail Mary super weapon that has been worked on and improved by the victims of each cycle is fine but rather uninteresting. I personally would rather be the solution to defeating the Reapers not to be a MacGuffin but instead the combined might and ingenuity of all the species of the galaxy united, but whatever, that's not the issue here. The issue is that the Crucible slash Catalyst make no fucking sense. In case you don't remember the details, I'll give you a refresh. The Crucible is a battery that powers the Catalyst, which which is the Citadel. The Star Child is actually the Reaper Intelligence who was created by the Leviathans to preserve life at all costs. The Reaper Intelligence came to the conclusion that the best way to ensure the continuation of intelligent organic life across the galaxy is to kill all species that are capable of creating synthetic life every 50,000 years or so. They think this is the best solution because they do not believe that synthetic and organic life can coexist. So the only way to stop synthetic life from wiping out all organic life is to kill every species that is at a certain technological level and let all of the less advanced species pre-space flight not able to talk yet live so that they can evolve and then once they're advanced they kill them so on and so forth repeat forever so this intelligence that has been slaughtering trillions of people for millions of years is easily convinced to stop by Shepard, which is dumb as fuck on its own but what's even dumber is the fact that the Catalyst has the power to seemingly do anything. As one unsure Mass Effect developer put it, it's space magic. Controlling the Reapers makes sense as an ability for the Catalyst to have, even though there's really no reason that Shepard would have to become the new Reaper intelligence to do so. Destroying all synthetic life in the galaxy is kind of a stretch. It doesn't make that much sense, but it's not atrocious. But the ability to fuse synthetic Synthetic and biological life is so dumb and nonsensical I can barely put it into words. For some
some reason, the Reaper Intelligence made the Catalyst have a ray that would fuse all synthetic and organic life. What? How would that even work? Part 3, Thematic Dissonance. Okay, I will keep this brief because I know the internet is very analyzing themes is stupid, the curtains are blue, but I would regret making this video and not addressing this topic. The Mass Effect series has many different themes and ideas, but the strongest of all is the age-old question, do the ends justify the means? This question is ever-present in both the lore and is the framing device for most major decisions. Should you sacrifice some hostages to take out a dangerous terrorist who could possibly kill even more innocent people? Should you cure the genophage, possibly leading the Krogans to wipe out all other intelligent life? Both of these questions have not only strong moral implications, but affect on the world as well. Both ask the questions, do the ends justify the means? Biological warfare and collateral damage are both morally reprehensible, but when you are weighing each for the potential damage not doing them could cause, you might find yourself making a different decision. Now, I'm not saying the ending to Mass Effect 3 should try to answer the question. In fact, I'm, it certainly shouldn't. I'm saying the ending should address and relate to the question. As it stands, the Crucible, i.e. the ends, is completely separate from the means. What I mean by that is the majority of the game involves creating a united army of all the galaxy species for a continuous front against the Reapers, in preparation for all-out war. Nearly all of the choices and sacrifice made, both on and off screen, relate to the idea that the Reapers must be defeated using an army. This reinforces the idea of this series that sometimes the only way forward involves hard choices to which there is no right answer. But since you beat the Reapers using the Crucible, there always was a right answer. Working for Cerberus, blowing up a relay resulting in the death of 200,000 people to slow down the arrival of the Reapers, and all the other sacrifices made were pointless. All that anyone ever needed to do was go to Mars and pick up instructions for the Deus Ex Machina Ball. Part 4 Conclusion. In conclusion, the ending of Mass Effect 3 betrays everything the series was about, from the gameplay to the themes. This is a condensed version about the issues with the ending. I could literally talk about this for days, but I will spare you the pain. Thanks for watching, and we'll bang, okay? Thank you for watching my Mass Effect 3 ending video. This is a video I've wanted to make for a long time. I've always wanted to make these types of video essays, but I was worried about them not getting views. I hope this one gets views, and I'd love to make more videos about Mass Effect. I could talk about the series for weeks. Um, I, I have plenty of good ideas for videos, like how Andromeda is good, actually, how Garrus is secretly a terrible person, and plenty of other terrible videos about lore and shit like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.